So what if I told you this cute, derpy little frog right here is responsible for the extinction of over 120 different species of amphibian? And that's not even the craziest thing about this story. We're going to talk about everything from frogs in space to literal pregnancy test. And of course, everybody's favorite, frog pandemics and cannibalism. Yep, this is going to be one crazy video, so let's cue the intro. A few days, they actually had about a dozen go inside one of their traps, but they believe there are hundreds more inside the pond. They're unique in shape. These are pancake aliens. They can spread diseases um, and they're just voracious eaters so Okay, all jokes aside, while I know this species of frog doesn't look that intimidating, the African clawed frog is by far one of, if not the worst invasive amphibian in the world, and it's not for the reasons that you'd expect. When most people think of an invasive species, they imagine a pet that gets too big for its enclosure and is eventually released and starts eating all the native wildlife. Well, you see, the African clawed frog has a very different story behind it. Prior to being kept as pets, these frogs were mostly used in scientific research, in large part due to their hardiness and abundant populations in the wild. And while trying to chemically stimulate them to figure out what causes these frogs to change color, we accidentally found out another really interesting fact about these frogs that would change human society forever, and this fact would inevitably lead to them being exported all across the world. So what was this incredible discovery that these scientists found? Well, they found out that when these frogs are exposed to HCG, they actually start ovulating. So to translate that into non-scientific terms, HCG is the human hormone that is produced when a woman becomes fertilized in the body through reproductive means. Basically, all placental mammals produce their very own specific hormone in their urine once they become pregnant, and these frogs could detect it, and when it is detected, these frogs will immediately start laying their eggs, making these frogs the perfect way to tell if you're pregnant or not, at least before these were invented. So yeah, technically there's a very good chance that your grandmother found out she was pregnant because she decided to pee in a cup, send it out to a lab, and inject that urine into a frog. And don't worry, this video is going to go from being really weird to really dark in just a few minutes. As only a few years after this discovery, these frogs would be exported around the world and used for pregnancy tests all the way up until the 1970s, when electronic pregnancy tests would become widely available. During this time though, these frogs were kept in mass in labs, where the African clawed frog would inevitably become the first frog to ever go to space, the first amphibian to ever be cloned, and also the first frog species to ever have its entire genome sequenced. The African clawed frog was essentially the lab rat of the amphibian world, but unfortunately this means they weren't often kept in the best of conditions. And since they were captured from the wild, kept in mass, and occasionally exposed to other amphibian species, it isn't too surprising that these frogs would end up carrying a ton of different parasites and diseases, with the main one being chytrid fungus. So it's no surprise that when these scientists were done with these frogs, due to them no longer having a need in the lab once electronic pregnancy tests became widely available, a lot of them were released in masses into the wild across the world. Many of them were also sold into the pet trade, which would inevitably lead to irresponsible pet owners also releasing them into the wild. And as these frogs spread, you know what else spread? The chytrid fungus. When talking about invasive animals, a lot of people just focus on the animals themselves and not the diseases that they carry, even though in a lot of cases the diseases and parasites that these creatures could carry are just as if not more deadly than the animals themselves. Even famous examples like the Burmese python tend to carry rat lungworm, which has already decimated Florida's native snake populations. And something very similar has occurred with the African clawed frogs and chytrid fungus, but on a global scale. And while these frogs can be found with breeding populations now on every continent across the world besides Antarctica, they are still restricted by the fact that they need a mostly aquatic habitat, and they do not do well in extreme temperatures. So while these factors have prevented the African clawed frog from taking over the world the same way the house cat or European rats have, the same cannot be said about the chytrid fungus that these critters carried. 
In its native range, the African clawed frog, in addition to the many other species of amphibian that it shares its habitat with, were able to evolve alongside the chytrid fungus, meaning that they were able to evolve a variety of different methods in order to combat this disease. With the African clawed frogs in particular having a very specialized mucous membrane, which happens to secrete a variety of different antibodies, specifically made to fight off fungal infections. Sadly, not every frog on Earth has evolved this same adaptation. So when these frogs were inevitably released into the wild, they would begin to spread pretty fast, eating a lot of the native fish and even smaller frog tadpole species. But you know what would spread faster than these guys? The chytrid fungus. Which ironically enough would turn out to be even more adaptable than the frogs themselves, as it would hop from species to species, slowly traveling all the way across the Americas, Europe, and all of Africa and Asia. The fungus would even make its way to Australia, where it would be spread at an even faster rate thanks to another invasive species, the cane toad, which unlike the African clawed frog spends a good mix of its time traveling across from one body of water to the next, allowing for the mostly aquatic fungi species to spread at an even faster rate, as it would eventually transmit from one species to the next, leading to this fungus eventually infecting over 700 different amphibian species worldwide, from salamanders to toads and pretty much every amphibian in between. The fungus itself though isn't internal, but rather feeds on the skin of the different amphibian species that it infects. And while it can be combated by certain bacteria species, in most cases the fungus will inevitably start eating away at the frog's skin, leading to blemishes like this and the frogs either dying of stress or skin infections. What's really interesting though about this parasitic semi-aquatic unicellular fungi is that the same strand which has officially spread across the world isn't the same strand that the African clawed frog evolved in order to combat. Instead, the main strand we see going around across the world isn't from Africa, but rather Korea, meaning that it likely didn't originate in the African clawed frogs, but was simply transferred to them by another amphibian species in the lab. Currently, our main suspect is the oriental firebelly toad, as they are also known to occasionally carry this specific strain of chytrid fungus fungus and are somewhat common in captivity. Still, its exact origins aren't entirely known, but what is known is that this chytrid fungus has been killing tons of different amphibian species worldwide. As if the African clawed frogs spreading across the world wasn't bad enough, as they already compete with food and occasionally eat other frog species. This fungus that they have carried over has already wiped out over 90 different species of amphibian, even including some of the world's most iconic species, such as the Panamanian golden frog and the gastric brooding frog, both of which were icons of their respective countries before they went extinct. Sadly though, odds are that even more amphibian species are going to end up going extinct in the future, not just because of this fungus, but also because of other factors, such as climate change and pollution. As amphibian are especially vulnerable to those factors due to their incredibly sensitive semi-permeable skin which they both breathe and drink out of. For this reason, most amphibian species are incredibly vulnerable to environmental changes and by extension, extinction. But thanks to us and also simple evolution, some of these species are being able to adapt. As over time, some species have been able to evolve more antibodies in order to combat this fungal infection, and other species have been being aided by humans through gene modification and the introduction of antifungal bacteria into the slime coats of incredibly sensitive amphibian species, thereby helping them fight off the chytrid fungus. There's also many different operations across the world working hard in order to remove all sorts of invasive amphibian species, including the African clawed frog and many additional other invasive amphibian species. These efforts are very important, as you have to remember some of the world's most iconic animals are amphibians. You don't want to live in a world without axolotls, do you? Yeah, me neither, so we need to work hard on successfully trying to remove these African clawed frogs and the diseases that they carry. You should also keep in mind it's not the African clawed frog's fault that they are invasive, it's ours for not being able to dispose of these frogs ethically and responsibly. Just like all other species, invasive or not, these frogs are simply just trying to survive 
and this derpy little face holds no evil. All we can hope for though is that in the future this fungal infection is able to be combated and that this video does well because I need to make money. So if you enjoyed then please feel free to like and subscribe and hopefully if this video does well I'll make some more amphibian videos in the future. Goodbye.